Welcome to Tori's Barry's Fantastic Library. I usually interview people, but I'm struggling. So it's just me again. Um, I know I just posted a video on Monday reviewing all the books that I read in February. If you want to see that, you can go check it out. Um, so I did this whole video with my sister, Kara, and everybody's been waiting for it. And it was amazing. And I recorded it. And actually, she recorded it. And it was on her iPhone. But for whatever reason, whenever it recorded it, the video on her iPhone, it didn't record the audio. So here we are. No interview this Friday, but I do promise you that I will have more interviews with people coming soon because I have two people scheduled for this weekend to interview. So we'll be back to normal soon. I hope you have water. I hope you stay hydrated. And today, I filmed, what did I do? What was I going to tell you? Oh, today I filmed my very first bullet journal video. I'm very excited about it. I'll be posting it soon. Maybe it'll be up today. Maybe it'll be up Monday. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Depends on how much work I want to do tonight. So anyways, um, what I was going to talk about today, since I have no interview with people, was a book that I read this month because it's Jerry Berry's Fantastic Library. So if I'm not going to interview people for the human library, I'm going to talk about actual books or I'm going to talk about journal books because it's a library. So that's what I've decided because it's my channel and I can do what I want. I hope you really like my face and my voice and hearing me ramble because that's all I've been giving you and I apologize, but kind of not. Anyways, I'll just move on. I want to talk about The Help because I read the book. The book is 18 hours long as an audiobook, so I was a little intimidated. I think that might be the longest book I've ever read, consumed, listened to. But it was so worth it. So I did. I did the help. And I wanted to talk about it because I also watched the movie for the very first time after reading the book. So let me find my notes. I just wanted to show you how proud I am of my reading journal little doodle that I have here because it looks just like the title of the book. Just wanted you all to see that. Thank you very much. I appreciate your applause. Okay. So, anyways, the help. It's an excellent book. Let me tell you, I was skeptical. I was very, very skeptical. And I'll tell you why. Because <sighs> it's written by a white lady. And I know what you're thinking, Jerry, you're a white lady. I know, right? But I was worried that a, a white person would badly portray people of color because that happens often in books where like a male author has a female main character and he doesn't really portray her correctly because he's not a female, right? Like it's not his fault. That's just, that's just who he is, right? And that happens opposite a lot too, right? Where like I read a book in February, if you watch the video, where a white woman that doesn't appear to be gay by any means that I saw online wrote a book about like gay men and I felt like she didn't do the best job because, I mean, quite honestly, she's not a gay man. That's not her fault. It's just, so that's why I had worries. I was worried that this author will not be able to portray the characters very well, but it has a super duper high rating, like across the board, all websites and apps give it almost five stars out of all the ratings it's ever had since it came out in 2009. So what really pushed me to actually listen to it was the narrators, the narrators for the book are Jenna Lawson, maybe. She does a lot of the um, like white Southern women's parts in the book. And then there's Bonnie Turpin and Octavia Spencer. Um, I have never seen the movie, but I knew that Octavia Spencer and Viola Davis were the lead roles in the movie. So I really loved that Octavia Spencer was the narrator for her character in the book, which is the same character in the movie. And then I love Bonnie Turpin. I love her. I'm obsessed with her. I listened to The Hate You Give and Children of Blood and Bone in February. And she was the narrator and I'm obsessed. Like I will listen to any story she ever listens to. And she pretty much exclusively narrates for people of color, authors, authors of color. Yes, authors of color, black, African-American, authors of color, color, all the things. So I figured if Bonnie Turpin and Octavia Spencer 
vetted this book and was like, it's cool. I'll narrate it. Then it must not be bad. This lady must have done a really good job writing this book. So I, I listened to it. And it was so, 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 so good. I'm just going to say right now it, that there are going to be spoilers in this video because I cannot talk and compare about the compare the book and the movie without spoiling things. So if you have not seen or read it, you should pause this. Go watch the movie, go read the book and come come back um, if, you, if you're worried about spoilers. Just letting you know, this is your final chance. Spoiler alert. So the book was amazing, but it's um it's rough it's emotional the writing is wonderful the writing was so incredibly beautiful to me and so detailed there is a scene in the book where again spoiler alert absolute final chance minnie is taking care of miss celia at this point is working for miss celia and she goes i'm getting nauseous like thinking about it already she finds miss celia locked in the bathroom and whenever she goes in, there's like blood everywhere and there's blood in the toilet. And they basically describe how Miss Celia had miscarried late and her baby like fell out in the tub at five months pregnant. So there's like a nut tub in toilet. So there's like a dead baby in a toilet and the toilet's full of blood. And the scene is just so written so vividly and the way Octavia Spencer reads it I felt like I was there in the room and I was like literally in my car gagging on the way home it was like that's how good the writing is and I know that that sounds horrible and you're like Jerry why the fuck would I want to listen to this book but whenever the writing gets me in like that that's like my favorite thing so I don't care how what emotion it is I love whenever I'm so sucked in like that that I'm like I'm here I'm with you Octavia Spencer like I am Minnie I am next to Minnie I'm here right I love it so I really feel like they made the book I think that if I would have read this physical book or ebook I probably would have DNF'd it or given it like one or two stars because I would have heard a lot of times whenever I read an actual book I hear my voice in my head which is why I love audiobooks and I would hear a white lady portraying a black person and I would be upset with myself and upset with the author and I probably wouldn't have finished it. The audiobook was just superb. So the movie was really good. I must say, I have already covered that I am obsessed with Bonnie Turpin. And I was convinced that Bonnie Turpin was Abilene. I was like, Bonnie Turpin is Abilene. End of story. I will die on this hill. And then I saw the movie and I knew Viola Davis was Abilene. And I was like, well, I don't know. I know Viola Davis is good, but she's not my Bonnie Turpin, who's narrated three books now that I've listened to, and I'm pretty obsessed with her. And fucking Viola Davis is just amazing, dude. She is outright amazing. Like, I'm just going to fangirl for a second. Um, every thing that she feels feels so raw and so authentic on camera that you feel it with her so easily like whenever she's laughing in the movie it just feels like it's coming from the realest place and it makes me laugh and anytime she's being sincere or kind or choked up it's like tearing me up watching it like I think I cried more dur during the movie that definitely cried and teared up more from the movie than I did in the book because of Viola Davis. There was something about watching her that I was like, she is Abilene and I am feeling it with her. All the feels, I feel it with her. I love it. And I love that out of all the things they changed from book to movie, hers pretty much stayed the same except for the very, 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 very end. So like, okay. I'm trying to think of which character to start with of what was different between book and movie. I'm going to start by saying that I am a lover of all entertainment and I separate books from movies very well in my brain so that I can love both separately. And that's what happened with this. I love both very differently, but the same sometimes and separately. So I don't think one is better than the other. I'm just going to tell you the differences. And let me say, I don't know how... The creators of the movie fit 18 hours of book into like a two hour film. That just like blows my mind. So with that said, I think 
if we just go down the line of characters, um, Abelene's character didn't really change at all. They gave less backstories in general, which makes sense. Because again, you have to go from 18 hours to two. So, but I mean, the way her son died was the same. The baby she took care of that she talks about, as far as I remember, it's all pretty much the same. Um, the only difference was at the very, 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 very end of the book, uh, Skeeter gives her the Miss Myrna articles to write for, right? So she she gets fired just like she does in both endings. She gets fired as the nanny, fired slash retired, depending on how you want to view it. And she writes for Miss Myrna at the end of the book. In the movie, that doesn't happen. They just have the really sweet, emotional, like, slow walk away, which I loved. I thought that was cool. I felt like they didn't really need to end it by saying she got the the writing thing. Her closing sentence was amazing. Uh, everybody knows the quote, like, you is kind, you is smart, you is important. That's wonderful. I loved that that stayed the same. Um... Yeah, that's like a very well-known quote from the movie and the book that everybody knows and uses. It's all over TikTok. It's everywhere. So with Minnie, I feel like... I feel, I feel like, um, especially since Octavia Spencer was the narrator, it was like Octavia Spencer's voice is so distinct and it has so much character in it that while I was listening to it, I could see her face. Like her facial expressions show through her voice. And so I loved that she was exactly the same on paper as she was on the in, in the film. The only thing is I feel like they didn't put enough... Em you didn't even see Leroy. He didn't exist in the movie at all. Um, you heard of him, but you never saw him. And I really wish I could have seen him as a real person because he was a big part in the book. He, uh, they, did, they definitely downplayed the beatings and the turmoil that she went through, whether to leave him or not, and explaining why she can't leave him. So... That was one thing that they didn't do in the movie. Again, I don't think she was meant to be the main focus. She's like second. She's she's like a secondary character, but yeah, I don't know. So I get I get kind of why she got pushed to the wayside with that, and they didn't really focus on that. It's hard to focus on everything, right? So that, I think that was the biggest difference with her. Um, I loved that they kept, like, the shit pie story exactly the same, like, almost to a T. I loved that. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else about Minnie that really bugged me. Oh, in the movie, she tells her daughter the rules of being a maid in, and says that her daughter has to go be a maid because uh, Lee, Leroy's worried about money or something. I think in the way in the book... Minnie's mom gives her the rules of being a maid. Her daughter Sugar, I think, babysits or nannies for somebody. Um, I don't think she's quite a maid yet in the book. So that was one thing they changed. But again, they have to condense this info. They're not really doing backstories. So important info from the book kind of has to be placed elsewhere. So I did appreciate that they put the rules of being a maid in the, book, in the movie in a creative way. I really liked that. All right. So then with Skeeter... I had no idea to, how to envision, um, like, what actress to envision Skeeter. And whenever I found out it was Emma Stone, I loved it because she has, like, gigantic eyeballs and she's a cartoon character. Um, so I thought that was really funny. But, and I think that the mom in the movie is a very excellent casting choice. I think my least favorite thing about the movie was how much they made Skeeter's mom seem like a good person. I feel like the movie really made Skeeter's mom lighthearted and apologetic at the end and like showing that she might change her ways. But in the book, she was really truly awful. She said a lot of awful things and she did a lot of awful things. It, yeah, it was just awful. Um, but I do love, what's her name? Jen, Jen Anning? Jen, Jenny Anning? Jennifer Anning? I don't know her name. I can't remember. Either way. Whatever the actress is, I loved her. I loved them as mom and daughter. I loved her role. I just wish they would have made her more awful. Um, they also made it clear from the beginning of the movie that she had cancer. And in the book, that was like a big blow to Skeeter. All the awful women in the Junior League are pretty much the same as they are in the book. Hilly is pretty much the same exact character. So is Elizabeth. 
Mae Mobley is the cutest fucking thing I've ever seen, but it was like the perfect casting and I loved every minute of it. Um, who else is there? I mean, obviously there's Constantine. I love who they casted for Constantine. I thought she was so beautiful and so perfect and so sweet and everything you imagine while you're listening to the book about Constantine. But I wish there was more of her. The whole book is like weighted on her and she's constantly asking what's happening to Constantine and everybody's evading her. And then she has to stop asking people about Constantine so that they'll end up doing interviews with her. So I wish there was more Constantine in it. And then they completely completely changed Constantine's daughter. They changed her story. They changed her looks. Everything. So as far as uh, complaints, I could see book readers being very upset about that because like I said, this is kind of like the hidden center of this whole book. Like if this book is an onion, its core is Constantine and you're constantly peeling the layers away to get closer and closer to the Constantine story. And so it's, it's a really important part and I think that might be like my secondary complaint, but it kind of goes along with how awful Skeeter's mom is. So those complaints are kind of hand in hand. They're friends because Constantine's dad was white. So whenever she has her baby, the baby ends up being born very, very uh, white looking, which can definitely happen. And so... She then has to give her child up at the age of four because uh, there's too many problems with a black woman raising a white baby in Jackson, Mississippi. And they explain all of that really well. And it's all very understanding and incredibly heartbreaking. And probably the closest I came to crying while listening to the book was her talking about having to give up her daughter at the age of four to an orphanage and her daughter's like crying for her. It's already like making me emotional. So then like 20 years, 25 years later, something like that, her daughter reconnects with her and they start writing and they start hanging out. And at this time, Skeeter's at college and uh, her daughter comes over to the Phelan's house and she doesn't really like say who she is. She just starts mingling with all the rich white ladies and then she's going to join the DAR or whatever it is that Skeeter's mom is in. And so, and then once they realize who she is and that she's Constantine's daughter, like she's now she's a colored person and she can't be around here anymore. And they're totally offended and they start giving her all these problems. And then um, Skeeter's mom says a bunch of awful shit to her and she spits in Skeeter's mom's face, which is a pretty shitty thing to do, I must say. But still. They're, they're being truly awful to, to these people because, you know, they're, they're black and that's like a problem in Mississippi in like all of time. So it's this whole blowout that happens. And then from there, I lost my train of thought. Oh, so then from there, after she spits in her face, Skeet, after Constantine's daughter spits in Skeeter's mom's face, it's getting confusing. I hope you're keeping up. Then Skeeter's mom decides to tell Constantine's daughter that her mom gave her up whenever she was four because she didn't love her and because it was too hard for her to raise her, which is an incredibly rude and horrible thing to do. So then her daughter leaves and Constantine goes to follow her and she dies. And it's truly, truly awful. It's like really, truly awful. And they don't make it seem like Skeeter really forgives her mom at all for what she had done to Constantine. I think she kind of like tries to get over it, but I don't think she ever forgives her for it. Like she does in the movie. And she definitely doesn't like show as much remorse at the end as she does in the movie. So well, that was a really long winded version, but I feel like it's so important for you to know if you only watched the movie and you want to know what you're missing that was probably the biggest thing I think other stuff was just very minor like the way Celia's husband first met Minnie was really funny he met her and he looked he's like carrying an axe because he's thinking about chopping down the tree in the backyard that they hate so then Minnie freaks out because she's like cleaning the bedroom or something. 
And then he's like, well, don't tell Celia that I know. Just keep up the ruse. So then C Celia thinks that John doesn't know about Minnie. But Minnie knows that John knows about Minnie. And it's this whole thing. And then eventually Celia finds out that John knows about Minnie. But John doesn't know that Celia knows that he knows about Minnie. And that's like exactly how it's, how it's explained in the book. So it sounds really funny. Um, so I loved that part of that story but yeah otherwise I think it was all pretty much the same and yeah I just I'm constant oh one minor thing is that um Skeeter physically brings her typewriter to Abelene's house all the time and in the movie I think she just carries her notebook and she handwrites and then she goes home and types so yeah, Stuart was exactly the way he was in the movie as he was in the book. Um, in the book, they end up breaking up for like five months and getting back together. But for the sake of time, the movie just kind of like skimmed over that. So yeah, I think overall both were 10 out of 10s for me. I gave the help book five stars. If you ever want to know exactly like what my reviews are that I write out you can always follow me on goodreads um yeah so that's the help movie versus book I think if you love to read like because it's it's a long one if you love to read you should read the book I think if you love the idea but you don't want to read a really long book the movie probably gets the point across really really well so yeah um yeah oh you know what i just realized they left like a lot of um violence out whenever it came to the movie like they don't really talk about how the one maid's son got blinded because he accidentally walked into a the white man's bathroom or something like that he does something super minor and they literally beat his face to the point that he loses his eyes and he's blind um i don't think they played enough on the violence with like yule may getting arrested um i, I think they kind of shied away from that in the movie so yeah um i'll probably think of a million more things tonight as i overthink this video anyways so yeah you'll have to let me know in the comments if you like one more than the other if you like my review if you agree with my review if you disagree with my review i love all opinions i love all people um yeah i have so many other book movie comparisons that i want to do so if you guys like this i'll do more um like there's little women there's uh uh nine perfect strangers big little lies there's so many books and movies that i've read um like the hate you give is also a movie there's the orchid thief that i read that's also a movie i have a list so um yeah if you want more book comparisons i'm way happy to do them i think i might do one on little women next because i feel very passionately about that book just like i do the help and i am obsessed with the with the greta movie the greta version of the movie the newest one that came out in 2019 i think i'm obsessed with that movie i watch it all the time for comfort so yeah that's another one that i feel very strongly about and that one might be next but either way i very pinky promise that i will have more interviews soon for whatever reason, Anchor isn't working well, so I haven't been able to upload to Spotify, so we're only on YouTube at the moment. But I hope you know that I still love you, Spotify users. I love you very much. Um, yeah. Continue your support. Continue your love for the show. If you want to be on the show, let me know any means possible. DM me on any account you can find. Um... I'll have a bunch of links in the description as always, like for my Patreon and my Amazon wish list and my Goodreads and my Instagram and my TikTok because I have TikTok now because these damn kids these days love TikTok. So I had to get one. I don't know. Either way. Um, yeah. All right. I hope you guys had a great time. I know I did. 
I hope you stay hydrated and I hope you keep watching my things because I like making my things. And I love you. Okay, bye.